Well, folks, we do a lot of talking about the future of Nintendo at this channel, but a lot of it's focused on whatever Nintendo's next platform is or their new video games coming out. Like, I, I would love to talk about how Metroid Prime 4 Beyond seems to be snubbed at the Golden Joystick Awards, and you might go, well, how can a game that hasn't come out be snubbed? Well, it's not even nominated for most anticipated game for 2025 and yet it's probably going to be a 90 plus rated game if the history of metroid prime uh, is to be believed but you know it is what it is we're not here to talk about metroid uh potentially being snubbed here actually we are still here to talk about the future of nintendo but in a different way from a business perspective because People are a little concerned. I've I seen a smidge of concern today over some new news today that Saudi Arabia is looking to increase its stake in Nintendo. And a lot of the fear comes because people are worried that at some point a hostile takeover could be attempted on the big N. And I'm here to tell you all just right now, out the gate, that's not going to happen. Nintendo has protections in place to prevent such things. However, you know, if you own 51% of Nintendo, that is what a hostile takeover is. You now make all the decisions. So we'll get, talk about this in a moment. Before we do, I want to remind you we're on our road to 140,000 subscribers. You want to stay up to date on all the latest things going on with Nintendo and the future of the company, all you got to do is subscribe to the channel. Let's go ahead and take a look at this article over on Nintendo Life. So Saudi Public Investment Fund is considering increasing its stake in Nintendo. It will make investments in what it says is a friendly way uh for those who don't know saudi arabia all their money came from oil and the oil industry is actually in a bit of a downturn globally right now so they're looking to divest take a lot of the money they have put it in areas where they think there's growth and nintendo is a pretty safe bet uh you know like you're not gonna probably see them make like a bid to buy ubisoft because that's probably a a, a bit of a riskier move that tencent might be attempting to do we'll see what happens with ubisoft there and Oh, some some big hot water right now but nintendo seems like a pretty safe bet if you wanted to try to buy out a company but you can't just straight up buy out nintendo it's not how that works so the saudi arabia public investment fund is considering increasing its stake in nintendo and other gaming firms it has been revealed speaking in an interview with japanese news agency kyoto news prince Faisal bin bandar bin sultan al swad I, i'm gonna butcher these uh, foreign names vice chair of pif's gaming unit revealed the desire to expand but said that there was no urgency to make further investments that any increased stake will be made in a friendly matter pif currently owns 8.58 percent of nintendo and is the largest outside investor in the company when they mean outside they mean outside japan so the biggest investors in nintendo are japanese companies and the original uh, yamuchi family but they're the biggest outside investment. It has minority stakes in video game companies Nexon at 10.53%, Koei Tecmo at 8.99%, and Capcom at 6.6%. It also owns 96% of the King of Fighters and Fury Creator SNK. They basically own <laughs> uh, SNK. 4% uh, I think is still owned by the original founder of that studio. Now, increased investment in gaming entities is part of Saudi Arabia's drive to reduce its reliance on oil experts, the nation's main source of wealth. It initially took a 5% stake in Nintendo in 2022, increasing the stake to 6% the following year, and obviously right now is at 8.58. So they've been slowly increasing their investment in Nintendo, and we have no idea, you know, how far uh, you know, the Saudi Public Investment Fund and Saudi Arabia wants to go with investing in Nintendo. Nintendo is a rather safe investment, as I noted. Uh, they're on the up and up. The Nintendo Switch was a massive successful generation. Their movie, you know, the only one they have out, at least so far, popped off. The second Mario movie is probably going to do very well. Uh, well, as well as the first one. We have to wait and see. The Zelda movie could potentially do some pretty big numbers for Nintendo. And they're on the cusp of launching new hardware, which should give them a whole nother generation of increased wealth and all that. So in the end, it's probably a good time to invest in Nintendo, at least if you're investing at the level they are. A lot of us, like me, like if you're going to buy a Nintendo stock, you kind of want to buy it when it's at a, a low point. But when you're a massive and you're looking to make, make major, like 8% owner, 10% ownership, uh, you're not necessarily going to care about what the stock price is now if you think it's going to be worth a lot down the line. It also allows them to hold money in Nintendo uh, as a very stable stock. Uh, there's, there's a lot of Japanese companies that actually own huge chunks of Nintendo stock because uh, it's a stable stock. Nintendo has no debt, and so it's a great way to just hold money uh, and, and not lose it. It's like a no-risk sort of investment, 
in that way. I, I don't want to say no risk. There's always some risk, but you know what I'm getting into here. So that doesn't mean that there aren't comp companies and people invested in Nintendo that do it and play the stock market and make money. Of course, that's always a thing. And here's the thing. I'm not here to get into the geopolitical and all the other reasons that people are scared of Saudi Arabia doing a hostile takeover of Nintendo. But I am here to tell you it would be pretty difficult to do so. Remember, if they're looking to increase their stake in Nintendo, I could see them going up to 10%. And I would say, like, at maximum over the next 10 years, they maybe increase to 15%. But here's the thing. Saudi Arabia would have to get 51% of that and in order for that to happen they would have to pry the stocks away from one or multiple of japan's biggest investors and nintendo you know is one of their own biggest investors they've bought back stock and, and made their stock more valuable in doing that they've done split stocks and a whole bunch of stuff nintendo's done over the years uh it's going to be pretty hard for the hostile takeover to happen the yumuchi family owns significantly uh the, so a lot of banks in japan own significant portions of nintendo so it's just very very difficult to imagine Saudi Arabia being able to do a hostile takeover at 51%. This isn't like when Vivendi was trying to take over Ubisoft. You saw that they were attempting a hostile takeover because it started with like a small 5%. Then it was 15. Then it was 30. Then it's all of a sudden it was like 40 something. And you're like, oh my gosh, they literally are trying to hostile takeover. And then Ubisoft was able to take care of business and not have that happen. Now, some people are obviously worried about Tencent possibly buying out Ubisoft. But again, it sounds like that's only one option being considered by Yiz Gimat and, and all the executives out there it does sound like the other option they're considering is going private no longer being a publicly traded company going private can help protect the value of the company it's not like ubisoft is sitting here in a ton of debt and you know has no money and no assets it's just that they haven't been able to turn anywhere close to the profits that they have been projecting over the last few years and this year had a number of games not do what they thought they thought star wars outlaws was probably going to be a five to ten million seller and it sold a million copies and had a lot of backlash uh just because of not backlash because of what the game's about but backlash just from the game not being polished which is one of the reasons that they delayed assassin's creed shadows which was also unfinished and a big buggy mess of supposedly and so they delayed it to february and hopefully that's enough time to fix everything up if it's a big buggy mess right now i don't know if that's enough time maybe it should be delayed and you know till the summer but i digress the point is that nintendo is not in threat of actually being taken over uh but it is something to pay attention to over time to see how aggressive they might get and what policies and stuff nintendo might have to enact including stock buyback programs where maybe they offer you know a, a, an increased value to saudi arabia to buy back stock from them in order just to prevent a hostile takeover we gotta remember nintendo's got money in the bank so nintendo isn't like ubisoft where they have to worry about like not having money to do things and and handle themselves that nintendo is fully under control of itself uh for now and i i i just don't foresee uh this investment group from saudi arabia getting enough stock to ever be considered a problem but it is something we're going to monitor you know as they slowly increase we start seeing 20 plus percent like if we start getting to the 20 plus percent range you have to slowly wonder if that is like a long-term goal for saudi arabia's investment group to eventually do a hostile takeover nintendo simply because nintendo is such a massively profitable company they would like to see all that money come into their coffers uh you do have have to worry about a little bit because you know trusting you know when they say we're trying to do it in a friendly manner that's a lot of trust you're trusting people that a lot of people in the world do not trust so i'm just gonna sit here and go i'm not really concerned about this this doesn't really bother me that much but i am monitoring the situation and we will keep you updated in the future if this percentage starts to get higher like right now they're considering buying more what's that percent going to be we'll cover it in the future if it ends up coming to fruition uh but again i wouldn't be too concerned about it at this time but it's just something that we should pay attention to because this affects the entire future of the company so uh yeah that being said, folks, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow uh, for another video and another live stream, of course. I'm also going to be guesting on a podcast tonight, I believe at 7 p.m. Central. I got to double check. I think that's what it is. I'm going to be joining Liquored Up Live, hosted by Flipping the Switch. Uh, and it's going to be uh, me and Player Essence on there talking a bunch of video game stuff. So if you guys want to check that out, I don't know if the podcast link is live yet. But whenever it is, I'll put a link to it down in the description for you guys. Uh, thank you so much for being here i appreciate all of one oh i appreciate all of you and hopefully uh the packers won because go pack go jordan love let's 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 have a an all-around good game finally thank you guys for tuning in see you later <laughs>